What is the scariest creepiest thing that has happened to you when you were home alone? I live in a cul-de-sac. My bedroom is on the second story. I woke up one night around 3am to go to the bathroom. I knew we were expecting a lot of snow. I looked out the bedroom window to see the accumulation. It was deep. Higher than the curb. Like a white blanket across the cul-de-sac. I decided to get some water. So I walked downstairs. Turned on the light. Went to the bathroom and got water. Was downstairs maybe 4 minutes. I went back to my bedroom. All lights were out again and I looked at the snow one more time. Within those 4 minutes, there were now fresh footsteps leading from my house, across the cul-de-sac and disappearing behind my neighbor's house. Oh frick that. One time when I was about 8, back when kids were allowed to run free range in our country neighborhood, I came back early from playing with some neighbors and went to sleep on the couch as I was tired from running rampant. My parents thought I was still at the neighbor's house so they left to go to the store. When I woke up, it was dark and the power had gone out. I climbed off the couch and started calling for my mom when I started hearing noises from the basement which I never went down to anyways because it scared the crap out of me at that age. It was a scratching noise, like something with claws was dragging against the concrete floor. Naturally I was scared shitless so I ran back to the couch. Climbed into the hole underneath the cushions and waited until my parents got home. It only took them 20 minutes but to an 8 year old scared of being eaten by some basement monster, it felt like hours. I was traveling for business in the midwest on a sort of last minute trip. I ended up booking an airbnb. I knew it was too large for just one person, but I needed a quick place to stay and it was cheaper than a hotel. When I showed up, I realized the house was old and much larger than I anticipated. Three stories all to myself. To make things creepier, the master bedroom, which was fairly large, was furnished with only a bed, a bedside table, and an enormous mirror on the wall opposite of the bed. It gave me the willies. The first night, after I tucked in, the strangest feeling came over me. Mind you, I was exhausted from traveling all day. The head hits the pillow, lights out kind of tired. I was full on drifting to sleep when the awareness washed over me. It was like every cell in my body was screaming wake up, you need to be awake, wake up wake up, no sleeping here tingle, my internal monologue. Also, jump started to survival mode and was spewing kind of panic flight ideas, like get in the car, just drive home, like my subconscious suddenly took a very active role in directing myself to get out of the house. I was terrified to look up at the mirror. Truly horrified, I ended up getting out of bed turning on lamps and the overhead, with my eyes closed. I immediately texted a friend back home with the address of the house. I watched movies on my laptop for 4 hours before falling asleep with the lights on. The rest of the trip, I slept in a different bedroom. Most bizarre 3 minutes of my life. You may not rest now, there are monsters nearby. I had been watching a lot of really scary ghost stuff on TV when I was home alone and went to bed thinking about it. Later in the night I woke up in pitch black and heard a child singing or whistling in the room. I was frozen with cold sweats, ready to start crying. I remembered in the ghost stuff I watched they talked to the ghost and it made it better. I said who are you all scary and shaky. My dog snorted and smacked her lips and went back to sleep. She had been snoring and her dang nose was whistling. It was raining heavily outside. I was sitting on one of the chairs, looking out the window. And then suddenly, I heard something walking on the floor above me. I thought it was just a sound my mind was creating because yeah, I was already scared being all alone at home. So I ignored. About 5 minutes later, I hear someone knock on the window. I thought maybe it was a bird who hit the window or something. But then, suddenly, this huge floor lamp fell right on me. And I sat there for solid 10 minutes, trying to understand what exactly happened. The lamp was perfectly fine. I still don't understand how it fell. Definitely the creepiest alone moment of my life. The ghost in that place is a dong. My mom used to work night shifts so I was home alone at night all the time. I went to the kitchen to make some dinner and lock the one off the door as I'm waiting for the food to cook. I go upstairs and about 10 minutes later I hear this awful banging and scraping noise, followed by the sound of our screen door closing. I did exactly what you see in the horror films when the first person dies. I went downstairs, 
I called my mom crying because I see that the back door that I had just locked was now unlocked. She told me to come down and grab the flowers that were in the door. I said WTF are you talking about? And sure enough when I carefully opened the door there were three bouquets of roses. One for my mom, sister and I. She says that a guy friend came by to give them to us for Valentine's Day. And that he did not have a key. That's why he left the roses outside. Still never explained how the door got unlocked. Not alone and posted this before. My 4 year old son had a habit of announcing when he had to use the bathroom. He would say I gotta go potty. One time he makes his business known and heads off toward the bathroom. He returned seconds later and says there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I do know for a fact that it's just the two of us home so the hair stands up on my neck. I ask him, what do you mean? He repeats, there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I'm thinking, is it someone I see dead people or someone in a hockey goalie mask? So I grab the biggest knife from my knife block and tell him to stay here. I walk to the bathroom, take a wide angle to see in, nobody. Slowly and quietly walk toward the shower and pull back the curtain. Nothing. By now my son has walked around the corner and I ask him where did you see the person he points to an unflushed toilet and says see, someone's already here. His big brother didn't flush the toilet. Toddlers have the most fantastic knack for being creepy as crap and sparking terror over the most harmless things. Not me but my wife. We were asleep and it was like 3am in the middle of the summer when she wakes up to banging on the metal screen door up front. She goes to check it out and it's a child, like maybe 9 and this kid is just in some underwear banging on the door. My wife answer it and he just asks if he can come in. Then some tweaker lady comes walking down the street calling this kid's name. See him and calls him out and he just walks down the stairs to her and they keep walking down the street. She was really mad I didn't wake up. I hope that kid wasn't escaping from his kidnappers. I was a kid, around 10 yo, and I was babysitting my 7 yo sister. We grew up near an insane asylum, and every now and then we'd get an escapee in our yard. They'd walk off the grounds, and head through the woods toward the nearest big town. They'd get about a mile to our place and realize walking 40 miles to that town was probably not happening. So they'd ask to use the phone to call and get picked up by the hospital. This happened every now and then, but this was the first time it happened when I was home without my folks. The woman who arrived in our driveway wanted me to call the hospital to pick her up, but she also asked me if I had some matches, presumably to light a cigarette. I ushered my sister into the house and locked the door as I called. The woman was kind of half screaming half moaning. Matches. I need matches until they came and picked her up. I'm sure it was just for a cigarette but it also could have been to burn us alive, so I didn't give her any. I was cleaning the garage at about noon. The door was up and the door into the house open and back patio doors open. I did not notice the bank alarm ringing. Around the corner, it was always ringing. From false alarms kids using the fire exit. Anyways, two men come running up my driveway, into the garage into my house out the back. Doors followed by a dozen armed police, and a Benahill type chase started through my house I had to duck and cover under a workbench until they found the bank robbers under a kitty pool and in a playhouse in the backyard. Lived out in the middle of nowhere surrounded by woods and corn and wheat fields. I was home alone one night and decided to step out on the porch for a cigarette. I'm about halfway done. Take another drag and when I blow out the smoke it rolls around a face about a foot away from me. Needless to say I tossed the cigarette and knocked back inside and locked the doors. Oh f that lol. Absolutely. Undoubtedly seeing my dog who had recently passed away. I feel like I looked right at him when I came out of the kitchen. Smiled at him and said good boy out loud. Then went back to my cup of tea. My stomach dropped and my heart lurched when I realized a few seconds later. My uncle, all time skeptic, stepped into my great grandmother's kitchen off the back porch and my great grandfather was sitting at the coffee bar bigger than life. My uncle actually said hey before recalling that he was dead a week and noping it out to the backyard. When I was in HS, I was sitting in my room playing video games with my headset on. My parents were out of town, so I knew not to expect anyone in the house. Next thing I know, 
a hand grasps my shoulder and I turned around to see a fully dressed fireman standing in my bedroom. Apparently, our fire alarm was sounding and I didn't hear it with the headphones on. The neighbor let the fire department in the house with her key in order to check things out. Scared the crap out of me. He probably tells this story as a lesson to kids. There was this one time when I was a kid. I watched the movie I Am Legend with my brothers and near the end there's a scene with a dog that makes you not want to pet dogs. Let's just say. So we got home and there was a puddle of pee on the floor. But the house was locked and no one was home or had been home. We thought there was a zombie dog somewhere in the house just peeing on our crap. But we could never find any reasonable explanation. Turns out years later that the neighbor kid would pee in upturned frisbees and freeze them and slide them under people's front doors for them to melt. Dang that kid must have ate a ton of asparagus. That is a sick kind of genius. Not super terrifying but I was watching TV on the couch with the dog around noon or so. Suddenly she perks up, the hair on her back stands on end, and she begins snarling at the corner of the room. This dog, who was a previous abuse victim and scared of her own shadow, hesitant to ever bark or attack, was in a position to lunge. Right at that moment I hear clear, defined footsteps walk from my roommate's room across the hall, right in my line of vision. No one is there but I'm looking directly at the source of the sound. The dog is on the defensive but her tail is tucked between her legs at the same time. Immediately following this the room got really cold for a few seconds and it took her a while to lay back down. Never had any other paranormal experiences in that house nor really ever in my life. The exception being a house I nannied in for a while. The suddenness of it really freaked me out. There have been three stories in this thread that I've read where a chill dog goes ballistic at a corner. <laughs> Nearly choked to death, which was terrifying. When I was about 11 years old I was home alone one day over the summer, enjoying a bag of skittles and watching TV. I tossed a bunch of them into my mouth and made them into a sort of ball. Then something made me laugh and I ended up swallowing it. The ball wasn't huge, but it was big enough to get stuck in my throat and causing me to be unable to breathe. It was terrifying because nobody was home to help me and I started to panic. I remembered some cartoon or TV show where a character was choking and slammed their stomach into a chair to get it to pop out. So I started throwing myself into the side of this recliner we had and even though I probably wasn't doing it completely right, it actually worked and the skittle ball popped out. It was still one of the most terrifying minutes of my life because I thought I was going to die and very well could have. It's still one of my biggest fears about living alone is choking when I'm eating something too fast and not being found until days later. When I was 16 I found my neighbor looking into my bedroom window. We lived in the boonies, had a 9 foot chain length fence around our acreage and house but he managed to get in. I'm sure he wished he'd stayed away. I woke up to see him looking down in my basement window and I screamed. Then I heard him say holy crap followed by my yard dog's 180 pound self tearing past my window. My dog ripped a chunk out of the guy leaving blood and clothing behind but he got away. Never saw that creep again so he must have gotten the message. I still went out and got curtains and got my boy a nice smoked county. 15 stroke 10 bestest boy. My family was on vacation in Florida, I think near Orlando. I was 16 at the time. We had just settled into our hotel room and we were hungry. So my parents went out to get pizza. I was really tired so I decided to stay in the room. A little while later I hear knocking at the door, so I get up to go open it assuming it was my parents with the food, but I decided to look through the peephole to be sure, and there were two guys with their faces covered trying to open the door. I backed up and could hear them twisting the knob and pushing, so I freak out and scream get out, we're calling the cops. I grabbed the hotel phone and started calling the lobby telling them what was happening, and I heard whoever they were start running down the hall. Staff showed up but they didn't find whoever they were, at least not to my knowledge. My parents showed up a little while later and talked to the staff and all that, but yeah I was pretty shaken. Not a fun way to start summer break. I've been waiting to tell this, not at home but a hotel room in a not so great part of London. I wake in the night. The room's a bit stuffy and I'm considering opening a window. It's dark. There's some light entering the room from a nearby street light so I'm not sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me but. There's this guy on the other side of the room. 
He knows I've seen him because he stops moving as I realize he's there. I'm getting worried now. This is London it's likely he has a knife at least. I shuffle along my bed slightly. He edges closer. I have to make a move now I have option to run he is nearest the door. I stand make my way towards him heart pumping for a fight. A couple of steps in I get this feeling that this isn't right like I'm missing something. My eyes adjust a little more. I take half a step more. My eyes focus a little more and then bam I realize I'm. It's staring at another guy. I am staring at myself. What I thought was someone else was my reflection in a filthy full length mirror near the door. I was literally scared of my own reflection. In my defense the whole incident lasted about 5 seconds. When I was little. One of my aunts died from cancer and osteoporosis. My parents had to drop me off at home because it was getting late but they had to go back to the wake. When I got inside the house, it smelled so strongly of roses or some kind of flower. I thought maybe I was just imagining it but it was persistent and I could still smell it even after my parents came back. They could not smell the flowers at all. Part of me thought that was my aunt visiting me. The night my grandmother died I smelled the perfume she wore when I was really little. I was in middle school at the time and my parents had me and my sister stay home while they were at the hospital with my grandmother. After a few minutes of smelling her perfume, the phone rang and my mom said that my grandmother passed away. Her perfume had a really flowery smell. I was reading some SCP. For those of you that don't know it's sort of a wikipedia of all kinds of paranormal fiction world building type thing. But this particular page was about this stairwell that seemingly had no end and basically weird stuff would happen to anyone who tried to get to the bottom of the stairwell. A common thing that would happen is that after going down several flights of stairs, people would start hearing either a woman or a child's voice yelling for help. But the further down you went, the voice never appeared to be any closer. So basically it would always sound the same distance away no matter how many stories you descended. There were some other creepy stuff that happens but they aren't too important to the story. But basically, I had finished reading the SCP, and I was already pretty scared. Suddenly, I started hearing a woman voice yelling for help. I assumed it was the webpage playing audio, because sometimes the site includes small things like that. So I closed the webpage, but the voice was still there. So then I panic shut down my laptop, but it was there still. Unplugging my speakers did nothing as well. At this point I was practically crapping myself, so I wandered around my house, but I couldn't find the source of the woman's voice. I finally decided to nope the frick out and go outside, and finally the voice got a bit louder. After walking across a few yards, I found out what it was. Turns out my neighbor got herself stuck on the roof and the window shut behind her. So she had no way back, so she was yelling for help. I've posted this incident before, but here it is again. A couple years ago I was home alone, husband traveling out of state. I put on the news on the Samsung Smart TV in the living room, set the remote on the coffee table and went into the kitchen next room over to make dinner. After a few minutes I noticed I don't hear the sound of the news anymore, and I thought maybe the signal went out or the TV timed out and shut itself off. I come back into the living room and the TV screen is showing a picture of a couch in a living room. My living room. Takes me a minute to realize the camera in my TV has been activated and it's showing a live video of the room. The remotes were still on the table so no chance the dog accidentally stepped on them and pushed buttons or anything. A few days later news broke that Samsung Smart TVS had a hacking issue. Guess the real mystery is how often I was spied on before I put tape over the camera. Oof. That's really discomforting. It was January in Minnesota. There was about a foot of snow on the ground and my parents were out at a bar and my brother was at a friend's house but would come back later. I was in my living room watching TV and I heard a small knocking coming from the basement. So I walked down to investigate all over the basement to find nothing. Not thinking much of it I walk back upstairs to the living room to continue watching. About 5 minutes later I hear a loud crash from the basement and what sounded like a door opening. At this point I was pretty worried. I started to make my way down the stairs terrified and as I went down I thought maybe my brother was home without me knowing so I called his name. Nothing. I called again. And nothing so I kept slowly moving down the stairs only to find that there were drawers open and desks, boxes opened, and a few plastic bins and containers all knocked down and tipped over but worst of all, 
My back glass door wide open with footprint and with footprint and with foot I shut it. Called my parents and when they came, my mom called the police while my dad followed them. According to him, they went over my fence and to the road behind my house where they stopped. My guess is he was picked up, but we and the police never found out if it was planned or just a random house they picked to rob. Absolutely terrifying. When I was about 13 I spent the night over at my cousin's house. We were home alone for the night and stayed up late playing video games. I remember he left the room to use the restroom. I must have been playing something good because I was sitting on the edge of the bed up close to the TV. As I played by myself I felt my cousins come back in the room from behind me and he laid back down on the bed. Gave me a little bounce as if he had jumped on. Bed squeak and all. When I turned back to talk to him he wasn't there. He was still in the restroom. I looked down on the bed where I thought I had felt him and there was an imprint on the bed coming back up. Like if someone had been there and were just coming off of it. I have far more stories about that house. But that's definitely one time I felt the most shaken. The I was watching a horror movie can't remember what one now but in it was a scene with lots of crows dying around a farmhouse flying at the windows smacking into them and guess what the heck happened. A dang bird smacked into the window during that movie scene. I almost crapped my pants and was covered in goosebumps. I had recently moved to San Francisco. Managed to find a decent 1B slash 1BR in Oakland on my own. Came to the realization that recreational marijuana is not only legal here, but there's delivery. So I get some edibles. And for several months I enjoyed using small doses for better sleep with no issues. Late last year in December. I've taken my regular small dose, and I've sat down to watch the RuPaul Drag Christmas special. I hadn't exercised that day, was just sitting in a comfy chair when out of the blue, my heart just started racing. Like, dead sprint in the final lap of a marathon kind of racing. I've never felt anything like that before. I got up and walked around. I drank some water. I lay down and tried to slow my breathing. It got worse. It got faster. And I started to feel lightheaded. I suddenly had this horror that I was having a heart attack or something like that. And if I didn't call anyone I was completely alone. But my family is all on the east coast. And I only really have some work acquaintances here so far. No one would know. So I called 911. Got picked up in an ambulance. I informed them that I had used some recreational marijuana. And when the ambulance arrived they all seemed very skeptical. But the minute they checked my pulse, they all suddenly went into overdrive because I was in full blown tachycardia apparently. Had to get a drip of something to calm me down on the way to the hospital. So yeah, not your everyday creepy experience. But those minutes feeling something so completely out of place and feeling that fear of suddenly dying and it all being over at age 27 was one of the scariest experiences of my entire life was enjoying a lazy Sunday in front of my computer playing games. So was my flatmate in his room. Later that day I heard him work and handling some heavy piece of furniture. Probably the wardrobe he wanted to get rid of. Heard wood cracking and squeezing. Breaking and falling to the ground. Our doors were open. So I yelled to the other room without moving my eyes away from my screen. Yo. Buddy need some help. He promptly answered likewise concentrated nap. I'm fine. Do you need a helping hand? What? What? Whatever. Some minutes later I bothered to get up and take a look what he was doing. He was standing in the hallway looking at our flat door that was completely torn apart and broken into pieces. What the frick did you do to that door? Took us some more minutes until we realized that we just lazily ignored a burglar doing his job. Upon closer inspection we found out that the front door of the building was intact and locked and so was every window and side entrance. We figured the burglar was still hiding in a closet or something. We both crap our pants that moment. Grabbed our baseball bats and broke out in sweat. We were nervously trying to communicate in sign language to each other that trying to call the police might get us killed. Instead we managed to just act normal and state clearly audible that the burglar most probably fled the building minutes ago. And were going to have a long crap in the bathroom before leaving to the nearest police department. Door locked pants down. I was able to call the cops and 5 minutes later they stormed the building. No burglar anywhere but some traces, indicating he entered, and exited, the building though an old window on the roof. Home alone on a Saturday night with my son who was around 5 months old. 
My boyfriend at the time had gone out for the night, son was asleep so I was taking advantage of alone time and decided to have a long hot shower. As I was standing in the bathroom waiting for the water to warm up I glanced across the hall and saw a white light shoot across my bedroom floor. As I was staring trying to figure out what it was the toe of a black boot stepped out from behind my door. I screamed and ran downstairs. Then I realized I left my son up there so I ran back up, grabbed him and called my boyfriend to come home. After going through the house to make sure no one was there we rationalized it as me just being tired and hallucinating. A lot of strange things happened in that house and we ended up moving out a couple of months later. I received a murder threat by phone. Followed by a black Cadillac wandering around by my house only to later stop nearby. Followed by a guy with a machete walking in front of my house trying to see if anyone was there. It took me a few years to get over that. I just got home after Christmas from spending holiday at my parents house. I live on the coast, so in the dead of winter, my entire block was empty except for me, an older guy, and an elderly couple across the street. I was sitting on my couch watching TV, around 9pm kind of dozing off since I was so tired after spending so much time with my family, and eating and drinking like a pig for a few days. I heard the gate into the backyard close, and I had come in the front door so I thought it was closed. Then I heard the door to the back porch shake pretty hard. It was only a screen door with storm glass but I had my motorcycle in there so I locked it just as peace of mind while I was away. It scared the crap out of me I grabbed the tomahawk I have as protection. Weird I know. And rushed out to my porch yelling get the frick out of here. I didn't see anyone. So it was probably just the wind. Or stray cats. Since I unplugged the freezer to plug the heater in while working on my motorcycle before I left. And I had a lot of fishing bait go bad. Whether it was a potential burglar, which I doubt, why would they rob one of three houses with the lights on in an empty neighborhood, cats or the wind, I was no longer falling asleep and scared shitless the rest of the night, until I finally went to bed around 2 or 3 am. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.